Oh dear. Underworld episode three. This is where the special effects really fall apart, especially the cave stuff. Like in my review for episode two, I talked about how the cave CSO work wasn't that bad. It was done in an intelligent way with the choreography and the fringing not showing so bad because the caves were dark. Yeah, all of that goes out the window in episode three. It's like the guy who directed it tried really hard in episode one and two, and by the time he got to episode three, he was like, fuck it. Which is the same guy who directed Power of Kroll, so a year later when he did Power of Kroll, or just right off the bat, he went, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> Explains why Power of Kroll is the way it is. But yeah, the, the CSO cave work in episode three is pretty bad. Like, it's so much more glaringly obvious. Now, I'd seen Underworld once before. It was just many years ago. And I remembered then it not having the best CSO. And of course, it has the reputation for having bad CSO. So when I was watching episode two, I was surprised by how much I was just fine with the CSO. It was fine. It never really bothered me. I mentioned that in my episode two review. I was like, it's nowhere near as bad as its reputation and, I, and as what I remembered it being. Then I got to episode three, and I was literally six minutes and 41 seconds in and going... Oh, I know because I paused it for a moment and checked the time. And I was sitting there going, oh dear. It's bad. Like, the caves are much more lit up now so you can see the fact that the actors aren't really there, that it is CSO work. It shows really bad, especially on, like, Tom's hair. And, like, it's really bad on Tom's hair, like, right at the beginning of the episode when he's, like, talking about all the areas. I wonder where it all went. His hair looks... I do love that line. I wonder where it all went because the gas went back into the people for the room with the people releasing it. That was funny. Um, but yeah, the CSO wouldn't be as big of a crime if it wasn't in the story so much. But there is a lot of CSO in the caves here, and that hurts it more. And the CSO is objectively worse. It's, it just it seems like a lot of planning went into it in episode two, and by the time they got to episode three, they were just like, "Screw it, let's get through it. We don't have time." Uh, the choreography is not done as well. The light, you know, it, ju it just looks glaringly obvious. And when you don't take as much time to make it look good, and you have so much of the episode that's in scenes in the caves, it just becomes glaringly obvious how bad it is. And it really sticks out like a sore thumb in this episode. <laughs> also, the scene when they're in, like, the elevator, which is controlled by gravity. <laughs> When they first get in, the doctor's like, push, push. Let's start. I'm sitting there going. And then when you actually see them in the elevator, first off, that incidental music right there is terrible. Terrible. But when they're in it, the little background that's green looks pretty neat. But them just kind of in it as it's, ooh, it looks bad. The, the special effects in this one, yeah. Like, you know, when I reviewed episode one, you know, I, I was talking about how people always talk about the special effects in Underworld being bad. And I was like, man, these people are full of shit. And then now I'm like, nope, 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 nope. I see where they're coming from. I see where they're coming from. It's episode three that just starts this downhill trend of ooh, bad effects. The story is a little better than in episode two. It's still not overly engaging me. Uh, maybe that's just more my mindset at the moment, but... Uh, it's interesting to see the room that's kind of like the command center of that ship where they're about to sacrifice the guy's dad. That whole bit where they're burning the tattoo. It's very ceremonial, almost like a cult, honestly. But uh, <clears throat> that was interesting. Some of the dialogue. I still like Tom in this a lot. I can't remember the, in a lot of the dialogue right off, but I did enjoy Tom in this. Uh, of course, I like Leela in this. I like Leela a lot. She's one of my favorite companions. Although, if there is one criticism I have about Louise Jameson, and I've mentioned this before in other videos, but it, it also happens in this story, is that she always holds her knife like a prop. She never holds it like a knife. She holds it like a prop. She doesn't hold it like, you know, a warrior princess or whatever would hold a knife. She holds it like an actress holding a prop. If you get what I mean, that's the biggest criticism I ever have about her as Leela, because her acting is fine. But she never holds that knife right. I always feel like when she takes it out, I don't see this warrior who's going, pulling out a threatening knife because she's going to kill somebody. It's, okay, I'm supposed to take my knife prop out now and hold it, 
and threaten someone. And I never believe it. Now, keep I do remember early in her run. I think it's, oh yeah, Robots of Death, I think, when she throw, throw, throws the knife in a scene. And I think she actually almost hit a cameraman or somebody to where they wouldn't let her throw it again. So maybe just afterwards they were like, be careful how you hold the knife there, Luis. I always, I always like to picture that in any scene she's filming when she takes the knife out, everybody off camera steps back 15 feet. Like, all right, y'all, she's about to take out the knife, everybody. <laughs> but that's my one criticism, and it, it, it happens a lot in her tenure where she's taking her knife out, and it all, I'm always sitting there going, that's not how she should be holding that knife. And that does bug me a lot. Um, the scene when the one guy stays behind to buy them time, you know, he's talking to the captain, and he's like, good luck, captain, and you. I'm surprised the captain let him stay when they've known each other for like 100,000 years. And then the guy only buys him like four seconds, which I'm not saying four seconds can't make a difference, but in this case, I don't think four seconds made a difference. I am glad he survived. <laughs> And that interrogation scene, when he's getting interrogated, it's actually pretty good. The actor playing the guy getting tortured, he does a really good job of that. And then the people questioning him, they're fine. Although the one guy who's saying he's telling the truth in one scene, I don't know if he realized he was on camera because he's kind of sitting there going, <laughs> he's telling the truth. It's like he's grinning, but he's not grinning. It's like he's, it looks out of place, like he's grinning at something off camera. And then he realizes he's on camera. He's telling the truth. Looks a little weird. Um, the whole thing that the guy's wearing when he's being tortured, that's in another episode of Doctor Who somewhere. I just, I recognize that. That little headset looks like, you know, headphones, old school headphones he's wearing. I swear that's in another episode of Doctor Who. I just can't pinpoint which one it is. But I'm looking at it going, I know that from somewhere. Gotta be somewhere. So that's gonna bug me. Um, the cliffhanger was a bit naff, just like episode two's was. I forgot to mention that at the end of uh, the last review. The episode two cliffhanger, when Tom just kind of puts his head down, to where you don't know if he's leaning into work or if the gas is overcoming him. Meh. I figured he's just leaning into work, and sure enough, the beginning of episode three, that's all it was. I was just, and it's the same thing here, when the guy just suddenly trips and falls and the cart starts to roll forward, I'm like, you clumsy old man. <laughs> it just, I don't know. For me, episode one has been the best by a country mile. I really enjoyed episode one and its cliffhanger, whereas two, the effects were fine. The story was really dull. Three, the effects are... <laughs> I like the laser effects, the little laser effects that fire, that little odd-looking green. It's a very alien-looking laser. I do like that. But other than that, the effects are... <laughs> the story is better, but still not great. Um... It's going to really come down to what episode four does to determine my whole opinion of, or my opinion of the story as a whole. I enjoyed it my first time I saw it. I've always called it an underrated story, so we'll see. So I want to know what you think of episode three of Underworld. Comment down below and let me know, because I always enjoy hearing from you guys. Other things to do, don't forget to click the like button and the subscribe button. My goal is to grow the channel to 1,000 subscribers this year in 2023, Doctor Who's anniversary year. So I certainly appreciate that if you enjoy my content. I also have a Patreon if you would like to contribute to that. There's a link to that down in the description below. I want to give a shout out to some of my top tier patrons, Colin Coney, Stephen Crane, and Finn Perkins. I appreciate their continued support as I do the support of all of my patrons. Gets you all sorts of little goodies down there. Uh, there's all sorts of different tiers. For instance, the... Um, the non-Doctor Who videos I do on Sundays, the reaction and reviews. Those are edited versions that show up on YouTube, the full versions. Um, <clears throat> the full versions go on Patreon if you would like to see that. I think the $5 tier and up gets access to that. If it's something you're interested in, check that out. I also have a P.O. box if there's anything you want to send me. I want to give a shout out to one of my patrons, JLB Who, who sent me this Region 2 disc, which I'm enjoying watching right now. Uh, so if there's anything you want to send, that's down there, as is a link to my Amazon wish list as well. Most importantly, though, Thank you for watching.